Hey everyone, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing another palette video. A couple weeks ago I did my best springtime palettes and today I am bringing you guys the palette tag. So basically this was a tag created by Samantha March and Ally Glines. So if you're interested in seeing my thoughts and opinions on different palettes in my collection, then keep on watching. First prompt is show your newest palette. And the newest palette I have in my collection is the Natasha Denona Love Palette. I just recently picked this up from Sephora and I'm obsessed with it. It is actually what I have on my eyelids today. I'm putting together a three looks one palette for this palette. It should be going up on Monday, so in about a week. And I love this palette already. I've done a few looks with it and I'm obsessed with the quality. I think it's just amazing. Everyone that was raving about this palette definitely knew what they were talking about. This is just such a beautiful palette and I really enjoy using this one. So this is the Natasha Denona Love Palette. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the next prompt is show your oldest palette. And my oldest palette is the ABH Modern Renaissance Palette. This has seen some stuff. I bought this when I was in high school. I think I was like 16. I had never really done any makeup and I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I'm gonna learn how to do makeup so I can use this palette. And so I spent like 40, I think it was like $42 at the time on this palette. Now they think they're like 45, so the prices just keep going but up. As you can see, she is well loved. I actually pulled her out recently to kind of use her again and see what my thoughts were. And I still do enjoy the formula, but I can tell it's getting really um, old. I don't think I'd ever part with this palette though. It just has too much sentimental value being my first palette and all. This is my modern renaissance. Also you can see the I don't know if you can see actually, the packaging is like all beat up and gross and nasty. The third prompt was show your most expensive palette and I have another Natasha Denona palette. This is the Tropic palette and this was a summer palette I think two years ago, one year ago. I don't remember the exact price of her big palettes. I think they're $129, so they're $129. I bought mine on sale and then I also bought it during a VIB sale so I got like a double discount on it. I don't think I would ever pay $129 for a palette yet. I just am not at that point in my life where I can justify that. But this is what she looks like. I've been reaching for her a lot this summer especially. It's been my go-to summer palette for 2020. I really like the colors. The mattes are really easy to blend and it creates just such a nice wash of color. It's like a subtle look, which I like. And then I also like the shimmers in here as well. So the quality is really good. I just, I can't justify spending $129 on this. I say that as I'm about to drop $125 on a Pat McGrath palette, but I have a gift card, so it's different. And now for my most affordable palette. This is the ColourPop Take Me Home palette. I don't think I've ever seen anyone show this on camera ever. This I got from Sephora literally in like 2017, I think. This is so old. I think I paid $6 for this. So this is super, super inexpensive. I don't have the e.l.f. bite size palettes, which I know a lot of people have shown, but I do have this. <laughs> I do enjoy this palette. I don't really reach for it. I used to use it as a travel palette and now I just kind of keep it because it's cute and no one has it. So I like to hold on to it. But this is my ColourPop Take Me Home palette. I wonder if any of these shades are available as singles though because I do like some of the colors in here. Next palette is my Everyday palette. I do switch up my eyeshadow palette every single day. I try not to use the same palette two days in a row or too often. I like to switch them up and make sure all of my palettes get love. But over the past year, I think the palette that I've been reaching for the most just in my everyday life has been the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. This is a cute palette. It has neutrals with like pops of gold and pink. I think the shimmers are really nice. I like to do the kind of the same neutral base but then use a different shimmer and that's how I put together my looks. Also it smells like gingerbread cookies which is amazing. This I believe is still available on Ulta's site. I haven't, I don't remember, I think they said it was limited edition and they brought it back or something, um, but I love this palette. I think the quality is one of my favorites out of Too Faced shadows. They just did a really good job with this palette. So I do enjoy this one and I do use it quite frequently. So therefore it gets ranked the everyday spot. Moving on to my most colorful palette, I chose to share the Morphe 25L palette. I do have a lot of rainbow palettes. In fact, Friday's video, so today's Wednesday, but Friday's video is all about my favorite rainbow palettes. 
but this is the 25L palette from Morphe. This was their limited edition pride palette from last year, 2019. I love this selection of colors in here. I like that there's kind of some pastels and neons. I also like that you have your true color, so you have a true yellow and a true red. There's just so many fun things you can do with this palette, and nine times out of 10 when I'm doing a colorful look, I reach into this palette first, just because it has such a wide variety of shades in it. And I also love the white milk. <laughs> I love that white matte. I do wish this palette is still available. It is discontinued as it was limited edition last year. They have a new Pride palette out this year. It just didn't interest me as much, which is why I didn't pick it up. But this is my most colorful palette. The next prompt was show your smallest palettes. And aside from the ColourPop Take Me Home, the palettes I thought were the smallest in my collection were my MAC palettes. I have a ton of these, like the MAC quads and little nine pan palettes, but the two I chose to show you are from the Patrick Star collection from, I believe, 2017. So this is the Glam AF and Gold Getter quads. These are really gorgeous. They are also no longer available. I do like to collect limited edition products like this though, and the quality is super good, the color schemes are super cute, and they're really easy for just like quick go-to looks, so you don't have to think too much when doing your looks with these. For my biggest palette, I do have two. This is the Morphe James Charles palette, and this is the Morphe 39A palette. Palette. They are extremely beat up. This is the 39A palette. I use all these middle shades as contour shades for some of my deeper skinned clients and then I also use these shadows just for quick neutral eyes on set because that's usually what they call for just quick easy makeup. And then of course my James Charles palette. This one is also beat up. I use this one for the more colorful side of set work. Um, if I'm doing any basic SFX stuff I like to use this palette and this yellow I've discovered is really good on deeper skin tones when you're doing tattoo cover-ups. If you kind of layer concealer with that yellow banana shade it just like makes them disappear. So this one's really interesting. If you wanted to know how to do tattoo cover-ups, there you go. The next palette I'm going to show you is the palette with the best memory, and mine is the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. I started wearing this palette a lot when my husband and I first started dating. It's This is what she looks like. She isn't super used. Most of it is just I used to do like a wash of color, like one or two shadows in my crease. Um, because we started dating in the summer and it was super hot and I just didn't want to wear a ton of makeup. Um, and I also wear this palettes on my wedding day. So I just, I have so much sentimental value for this palette. This is another one of those that I don't think I could ever part with. Realistically, now I just wouldn't reach for these kinds of shadows. They just don't interest me as much as they used to, but I just for, the memories behind it and everything, I could never get rid of this one. Moving on to a palette I found worth the hype. This is the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. I love this palette. This formula, the Colored Rain formula, is one of, I think, the best matte eyeshadow formulas I've ever tried. I'm not sure if this palette is still available as I did purchase it quite some time ago, but these are the colors. It's just a really pretty neutral palette. It reminds me a lot of the Modern Renaissance with the neutrals and the orangey purple vibes kind of going on with it. I really like this gold shade, Your Majesty, and I think just overall, if you haven't tried Color Rain, I feel like you're missing out a little bit. A palette I found that was not worth the hype. This is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. <sighs> I'm gonna get a lot of crap for this one. I purchased this because I thought the packaging was pretty. I also thought the layout of colors was really pretty, but realistically, I never reach for this. I think I've had to force myself to reach for it. This is one that I always go back and forth when I do my declutters, trying to decide if I want to keep it, if I want to put it on my Poshmark. This or just, I don't know. Something about this just doesn't speak to me very much. And I know that a lot of people really, really liked this palette, especially the formula. And I do like some of the shimmer shades and the matte shades, but I just, I don't really enjoy the color story of this. And I don't feel like it was worth all the hype it got, if that makes sense. The next prompt was show a favorite palette from a favorite brand. I chose Melt Cosmetics as my favorite brand, and the palette that I chose is the Vita palette. Melt Cosmetics is a brand I started using in this past year, and I really like their formula. They've definitely grown to be my favorite eyeshadow formula out there. And this is the Vita palette. I have done so many looks with this palette, so many. So many. And I just never get sick of this palette. I'm always inspired by it. I'm always just wanting to use this palette all the time. And I have to kind of step back and force myself to use other things so I don't just use the same palette constantly. 
This is another one I've taken traveling with me quite a few times on my trips back home to Minnesota. Just, this palette is just so unique. There's only two shimmer shades and normally I love a good shimmer on my lid. So for me to love a palette that is predominantly matte, it really shows you how much I enjoy this palette and continue to reach for it. And the last prompt I have today is show your most used palette. And like I said, I do switch up my palettes very frequently and I try and use a little bit of everything, but I think the one I've used the most often and at least the one that's most traveled is the Soft Glam by Anastasia. I purchased this when it came out because I liked the Modern Renaissance so much. This was again when I was first kind of like dabbling into makeup and I have used the crap out of this. This has gone with me everywhere. It's gone with me to Vegas, it's gone with me to London, Paris, just like everywhere. I take this one on all my travels because I know it will never fail me. There are some huge dips in a lot of these shadows. I think there isn't a single color in here that doesn't have a significant dip in it. I've recently started to kind of pull back and use other things just because I'm not as in love with the Anastasia formula as I used to be but I still thoroughly enjoy this palette and will continue to love it forever and ever and ever. This is also a really good palette that I found for prom makeup. I've also taken this one on set with me. It's just been with me through so many just amazing memories. I honestly don't know why I didn't make this my best memory palette, but this is my Soft Glam palette. That is all for today's video. Thank you so much for sitting down and chatting about palettes with me. I am a huge eyeshadow person, so to sit down and just talk about things that I love, like eyeshadow, it's just a lot of fun for me. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up so I know to continue making videos like this, and also be sure you're subscribed so you never miss an upload. I will see you guys all later. Bye!